Do you ever get suckered into anime clips while endlessly scrolling? I scroll a lot of TikTok, some that are appropriate for this channel and others I should stay away from with a 10 foot pole. Don't judge me. This was one of those animes where the sizzle clips were hitting that next shot of dopamine. Not to mention, I am a sucker for an isekai. But hopefully, I can let you in on whether or not you want to delve into this anime that starts all strong but finishes like a 21 year old who drank too many pints. Today, we are reviewing A Returner's Magic Should Be Special. What it's about, what I like, what I dislike, and whether or not you should watch it. The anime is a very stereotypical magic style anime. It starts out super strong by the main character, Desir Herman, trying to stop the end of the world. And while he has a brief moment of success that is quickly dissipated in his death, Desir unexpectedly finds himself back in time just before the entrance ceremony of Heberin Academy, where he trained as a mage. A lot of the first season highlights the social differences between nobles and commoners, showcasing a common socioeconomic disparity. As you might guess, this being an isekai, Desir uses his reincarnation to focus on stopping the apocalyptic events that are set to occur. Utilizing all of his knowledge and power, he is very strong. With the knowledge from his prior life, he recalls who was strong and sets out to recruit them to his mission. He assembles a party of side characters, including Pram, Romantica, and Azess, so he can train them to be powerful enough to fight this future battle. There is a big focus on Desir's strategic brilliance and the formation of an underdog party determined to ascend the socio-hierarchy. They try to show rising tension with conflicts with the Academy's discriminatory practices, personal struggles, and battles against formidable opponents which contribute to the dynamic storyline. The anime's blend of magic, strategy, and character development creates a compelling narrative that tries to keep viewers engaged. As the story unfolds, Desir's party faces external threats including rebel groups and mystical challenges. The anime explores themes of discrimination, friendship, and the consequences of wielding powerful magic. So if you like a mix of fantasy, action, and suspense, you might enjoy this anime. However, I can't go into things I like or dislike without some level of spoilers. Starting off with the characters. A gripe I often have with isekai type stories is that the main character feels so over powered that the struggles and adversary of a normal person just feel like a bad joke. However, it's immensely refreshing that Desir and his friends are portrayed with what feels like a much more realistic set of emotions. There is a strong emphasis that Desir's magic is unique, but it's mostly through his strategic brilliance that it is truly useful. His intelligence was a huge draw for me rather than just being a cocky, strong isekai character. Desir is constantly worried that he and his party won't be strong enough. So he has to fight his inner turmoil of pushing his party harder and allowing them to improve at an accelerated pace without sacrificing their well-being, unlike my primary school teachers. I also like the growth of the characters, particularly with Pram and Romantica. Romantica was his past lover in another life, which I gotta say, what a name for a prior love interest. But at least for season one, our male lead doesn't make any creepy romantic advances towards her. Thank God. She has a unique and strong magic and his main focus is only on making her stronger so this time she doesn't die. Pram was a bit of a confusing character for me. He's a great swordsman who, to my interpretation, seems to have fallen in love with Desir. Now Desir, he doesn't seem to share these feelings, appearing to see him more as a little brother. It was an interesting turn that a different character fell in love with him. The character's relationships and the development feels natural, avoiding cliched romantic tropes and maintaining a balance in character interaction. The next thing I liked was the tension between the social class divide. This is a trope I'm generally pretty okay with. I generally enjoy seeing the everyday people get one over on rich people who want to take advantage of them. Eat the rich. Another aspect of tension I enjoyed was the underdog narrative that Desir knows they will be facing at the end. They showcased this with interesting training montages showing the character's progression in the face of Desir's worry about the end threat and the emotional stress mounting counting on him and the others. Finally, the world itself is very complex with lots of tasty elements, including the existence of a shadow world, 
the academy structure, and the discriminatory issues. These create a complex and immersive setting that I'm looking forward to seeing how they expand upon in season two. Onto what I dislike. I think this is one of those animes that unfortunately started out significantly stronger than it finished. In fact, I think the last couple episodes were some of my least favorite and dragged down the score. As you watch the anime, there is a lack of clarity around the reincarnation. I wish there would have been a more thorough exploration of the difference in Desir's past life, adding to the understanding of the narrative. As far as issues I had with characters, there were two issues. Certain side characters feel undeveloped and their roles lack impact, leading to a lackluster narrative around them. The second thing related towards characters is the romantic aspect, which to be fair, I think they did a way better job than I was expecting. The lack of clarity and exploration of romantic dynamics, particularly regarding Desir's previous romantic interest Romantica and potential feelings from side characters like Ram and Azess struck me as weird. I think as far as the plot and story, my main issue with it is that it was very predictable. Like the reaction of the nobles during the tournament were too obvious, potentially taking away from the impact of certain storylines as you continue watching the anime. I sometimes struggled watching the combat as well. It didn't feel consistent with certain group battles feeling subpar in comparison to other more engaging combat sequences. And my final issue was the fact that this anime utilized fucking MMO terminology like melee, support, and ranged attack actively in the dialogue. I don't know if this was a translation thing, but I found it really uncomfortable and non-immersive as someone who played a lot of MMOs and doesn't read manga and manhwa. Onwards to the rating. With the strong start but lackluster finish, I give this anime a 5 out of 10 on the halfling rating scale. This means it perfectly suitable for a casual watch. So if you're looking to burn through six hours, turn this on and relax. The characters, realistic emotions, strategic brilliance, and character growth, especially with Ram and Romantica, provides a refreshing departure from typical isekai trope. The tension between social classes and the underdog narrative add depth to the plot. The complex world, including the shadow world and discrimination issues, sets the stage for intriguing story. However, it is brought down by a lack of clarity around the reincarnation, predictable plot elements, and a lack of care with side characters leaving them to feel undeveloped. On top of that, the romantic dynamic lacked exploration. Finally, there was inconsistent combat quality between episodes and the fact that they used MMO terminology was the final nail in the coffin of this score.